but they were working instead of not working. I want to mention a bean called Mucuna prurians. This bean naturally contains levodopa, the same levodopa that's in cinnamon. The one, it does not contain carbidopa though. It's a bean that has been used throughout the centuries and throughout the world to help control the problems with Parkinson's disease. One study used Mucuna on 60 Parkinson's disease patients for 12 weeks. The Mucuna patients is twice as well on their unified Parkinson's disease rating scale and twice as well on the Hohen and Yarn scale. These are the two scales that we use to determine how people are doing. But they had to take six 7.5 gram doses of this bean powder every day. Uh, that's about a quarter cup or looked at another way, 48 capsules. So if they're taking it four times a day, that's 12 capsules of this bean powder at a time. And it has been noted in this study and many other studies on Mucuna purians that taking so much of a bean powder can be disturbing to the digestion. In other words, gastrointestinal problems, usually ranging from mild to moderate, not terrible, but still enough to put people off both from, dare I say, choking down so many uh, capsules or they, they have other ways of taking large amounts of powder. Uh, another study showed that le the levodopa from Mucuna prurians, the bean, had a greater bioavailability than levodopa. So it showed a more rapid onset of action in pa patients and just a slightly longer duration of, to limit off times afterwards. Tolerability was acceptable, but there were gastrointestinal effects. Now, one of the problems I already mentioned, dyskinesias that can happen, especially with overdosing with levodopa, um, were not found with mucuna. And so for people with dyskinesias, it's, it's, they're curious, well, should I try levodopa? I should try mucuna purians instead of levodopa. Is it certainly something to discuss with your neurologist? Now, on the basis of these two studies and many others, I have not been recommending mucuna purians be difficult to switch over, get the dosage right, and no one wants to eat that many pills or have gastrointestinal disturbances. And then I found this fascinating study. There are many areas in the world that are rural and people are poor and they cannot afford medication for Parkinson's disease. They simply can't afford cinnamon. They're not gonna get levodopa from a drug because they can't afford it. So this group went and they, they had the people actually grow the beans, okay? And then the seeds were roasted in a pan for 15 minutes. They peeled them, ground them up, and sifted them to obtain the powder. All of this can be done with hand tools. You, you can use a, you know, a mortar and pestle to grind the powder and a sieve to sift it out and peel it by hand. This powder was added to a glass of water and left sit for just 10 minutes. Now, when people drank the water, but they didn't drink the bean powder, so it was very well tolerated, no problem. They found about two thirds of the levodopa in the Mucuna purians powder prepared in this fashion was absorbed into the water. And when people drank it was absorbed into the people. And there was no competition from protein from the beans and there were no gastrointestinal disturbances at all. They did have to increase the dosage of the Mucuna purians because uh, only two thirds was absorbed instead of all of it. Um, but the people grew the beans themselves. Now it's something to consider, something to think about. I'm not saying immediately switch over, don't do that. Uh, you could, however, consider talking to your neurologist. Now, times when this might be reasonable, I can think of only two times that people might consider switching. One is at the very beginning of Parkinson's where you hardly need the levodopa at all. It's possible that if you could go with Mucuna purian water for a period of years and put off your need for the medication, then that might be a good thing. Because you see over time, over the years, over the decades, more and more levodopa is needed, especially if you're letting your dopamine producing cells die. And I'll tell you more on how to preserve them. But more is usually needed and dyskinesias and other side effects can develop. So if you can put off for a period of time, your need for the drug, that's one 
time when you might consider mucunipurians and discuss that with your neurologist if you can do that. Another time might be if you're having really severe problems with dyskinesias. And it may be possible that this form of mucunipurians could be helpful with that. But again, I, I advise caution on this and uh, definitely don't try it by yourself. You're gonna need assistance from your movement specialist neurologist in order to adjust the dosage of the mucuna and perhaps also levodopa. The Neuroscience Nutrition Foundation was founded to work with neurologic disorders, not just Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease, but migraines. By the way, I'm giving a talk tomorrow on migraines. If you know someone who gets migraines, there are 1 billion people on the planet who get migraines and they can be very disabling. So tomorrow at the same time, I'll be giving a talk on migraines, also very comprehensive, this is my style. Uh, if you'd like to support our work, you can go to this neurosciencenutrition.org and make a donation, very much appreciate it. Uh, I'm volunteering my time today and I volunteer my research time quite frequently. Thank you. Now, I'd like to talk about foods that reduce the risk and progression of Parkinson's disease. And especially if you already have Parkinson's disease, let's go ahead and reduce that progression. I have my email down here. This is my personal email and I'm willing to help. Please forgive me if there's a slight delay in responding to you. I, I get a lot of emails, but I would like to help. And if you have a question, there are questions possible after the talk today that if you have another one later, you can email me. There is a substance in soybeans called genistein and it protects dopamine production. Shown here, I have the edamame soybeans. I do feel that it's very important from looking at research to eat only organic soybeans because the ones that aren't organic have been sprayed with many different pesticides, typically, uh, including uh, Roundup. Uh, soy genistein, in this study, they used the genistein extracted from the soybeans so they could get exact amounts, protected dopamine producing neurons from injury. What's really exciting is, remember the one word I asked you to remember, tyrosine hydroxylase, the enzyme that makes levodopa from tyrosine. Genistein restored this and restored dopamine into the striatum, into the movement areas. This is exciting. Can actually help you walk better. It's also fascinating that other studies are showing there's a little bit of levodopa in soybeans as well. A lot of beans actually contain it. Fava beans contain quite a bit. In fact, enough to where you should be cautious with fava beans, they could interfere with your medication, supplying too much levodopa in some cases. But with soybeans, they don't have enough to interfere with medication. Uh, protein in a cup of edamame is 18 grams, which is about a third of your daily allotment. Soy milk, five grams, which is about a 10th of your daily allotment. So uh, if you're trying to keep your protein down, so, or please, uh, just organic soy and the genistein is remarkable that it can restore tyrosine hydroxylase. So this is something that can be added to your diet. Many, many products contain organic soy. And soy milk is one of the easiest. And I know that some of the people we work with are resistant to drinking soy milk until they discover the Silk Brand chocolate soy milk. And then they get very enthusiastic about it. Here's another common food that contains sesame. Sesame is a heat activated antioxidant found in sesame seeds, tahini, which is made from sesame seeds. It has a dopamine enhancing effect. It increases the biosynthesis of tyrosine hydroxylase so that we can more readily convert tyrosine into levodopa. Remember, this is happening for all of us with or without Parkinson's disease. We're constantly making tyrosine into levodopa levodopa into dopamine and using the dopamine to move smoothly. Now, sesame did more than improve the synthesis of tyrosine hydroxylase and the, and the synthesis of dopamine. It also caused a decrease in oxidative stress. It increased superoxide dismutase, which is one of the key enzymes that we use to protect our brain cells from death. And they're also the three minerals that make superoxide dismutase work, manganese, copper, and zinc. And sesame seeds have an anti-inflammatory action. So 
as you see, the side effects from some of these plant components can be quite positive instead of the adverse side effects that we sometimes see with drugs. I do wanna say that I am not in any sense anti-drug. I am a co-author of Mosby's Drug Guide for Nurses, for example, and have studied drugs as much as, as I can and try to keep up with all the new drugs, although it's virtually impossible. Carotenoids are the colorful component in plant foods. When you see foods that are orange or yellow, especially, they may contain alpha carotene, beta carotene, uh, lycopene. Uh, there are really quite a list of carotenoids in foods. Carotenoids are fat soluble antioxidants. So they're able to protect the fatty membrane of brain cells from death. Those people, with Parkinson's disease in this study, who had more carotenoids had fewer symptoms. They found that higher levels of carotenoids can reduce both the risk of and the progression of Parkinson's disease. So bottom line, eat plenty of organic fruits and vegetables. And uh, the more colorful they are, the better. By the way, green vegetables, even though they're not yellow or orange, contain quite a bit of carotenoids, which is masked by the green chlorophyll pigment, but they're there. Another component of plant foods is flavonoids and found only in plants. Uh, flavonoids are a subclass of polyphenols and they can reduce the risk and progression. This study was done and looked at over 130, well, it's a little under 130,000 people, 129,617 to be exact. 21 years, they studied them. And those people who were consuming more flavonoids reduce their risk of developing Parkinson's disease 40%. What foods have these wonderful flavonoids? Berries, apples, oranges, green beans, onions, other fruit, other vegetables have these protective flavonoids. The flavonoid rich foods protect the dopamine neurons from cell death by oxidation and inflammation. Inflammation in the brain can lead to cell death by oxidation. So we wanna keep these dopamine producing cells alive. We don't wanna lose another one, whether you're pre-Parkinson's, in other words, don't have it, or you already have been diagnosed. We wanna keep these guys alive in our brain. Some reasons why these flavonoids are so protective. They can activate our own antioxidant enzymes many different methods, mechanisms. They protect cell membranes from disruption, especially the carotenoids. They help keep dopamine producing brain cells alive. That's the key here. And they can restore energy in the brain. A lot of times the dopamine producing cells die because of a lack of energy, because of problems with oxidation in the mitochondria, the tiny energy factories that make energy in cells. Also, the flavonoids inhibit inflammation, which reduces the oxidative damage and death of the brain cells. You can find more on this in my book, Parkinson's Disease, Dietary Production of Dopamine at www.drsteveblake.com. Kind of easy to remember. Now, berries are especially protective. They use an extract prepared from blueberries, grapeseed, hibiscus, black currants, and mulberry. And these extracts are really rich in anthocyanins and proanthocyanidins. These are both polyphenols that are highly anti-inflammatory. The anthocyanins can actually get through the blood-brain barrier into the brain and guard our brain cells from inflam inflammation and cell death. The blueberry and grapeseed extracts we rescued dopamine producing cells that were in danger of cell death. I like that, they rescued them. Okay, so they were just about to die, but people ate a bunch of berries. I eat berries every day. I do recommend organic berries because in the case of berries, the insecticides are often sprayed right on the berry, um, which is different than say a potato where it's usually sprayed on the surface and the potatoes below. Now here's something very interesting. It has been found that people who smoke cigarettes have a reduced risk of Parkinson's disease. The nicotine actually reduces the risk of Parkinson's disease. So should we all light up a camel? No, please. Uh, cigarettes are highly damaging to our health. Uh, 
one of the worst things that people can do to their health is smoke cigarettes. So not recommended. However, this study looked at potatoes, tomatoes, and peppers, and they reduced the risk of Parkinson's disease by 19%. And they found that they traced it to the nicotine. Peppers had the biggest protective effect, cutting risk in half. And people who had never smoked cut risk 87%, which is why I have two big red bell peppers up here on top. We're thinking that stimulation of nicotine receptors may be what's protecting these dopamine producing cells and reducing the risk and progression of Parkinson's disease. So once again, bell peppers are on the top 10 list of food sprayed with insecticide. So you wanna get the organic ones, please. Um, they can be any color, but the red ones are delicious. Mm -hmm.